All right, uh, so the run's called La Ultra the High. Uh, it's not a Spanish name at all. La in Tibetan means mountain passes, and ultra being more than 42 kilometers, so that's why La Ultra. The high, because when we were doing the recce for the run, uh, it just seemed impossible. It was higher and higher and higher. It didn't matter how high we went. It was still higher that we needed to go to. Uh, so that's where the name comes from, really. Um, how it all started was while I was in school and then after that in college, medical college, more than a decade I spent actually in the Himalayas. And this particular scene that you see there, I could actually see it for over six years from my window. It got boring after five days, but the point was now I realize what I, was, you know, what I didn't appreciate then. Uh, this is the Anapur, uh, Macha Puchre, so 21,000 feet. Um, we took this run as close, I mean, we went up to almost 17 and a half thousand feet with this run. Uh, last year, October, when I was thinking about this run, I was invited to my school, my boarding school that I was in, and uh, I was supposed to be the flag bearer for the annual sports day. While we were driving up, I realized how brown the, you know, the mountains were rather than green. There was no water you know, the streams that naturally flow, flow down and all that. Uh, so the whole idea actually came along with that, that, you know, I need to run. So it started off as a solo run. I wanted to do it for myself. I pitched the idea to a few uh, Indian Army headquarters, Adventure Wing and, you know, other folks. And I told them, okay, that's to mention where Taumu Shan is on a graph like that, okay? So that's what I told them, that I want to start a run from 6,000 6, feet and go up a couple of mountain passes and you know, finish off at 14,000 feet. The guys told me I was mad, uh, not doable, because we need to acclimatize. You know, at 9,000 feet, we need to stay for four to five days. We would have to break the run. It wouldn't happen in one single day. And this run was supposed to be 222 kilometers. Um, I said, fair enough. What if I start from higher, since you know, uh, 9,000 is too low? So if I do it there? Uh, they said, you're mad. I'm like, OK, so be it. Um, Finally, this is what we did. Uh, we started actually the other way around. So we started from actually the wrong side. Uh, we climbed up 42, kilo 42 kilometers was uphill. Uh, we reached up to 17 and a half thousand feet. That's the highest motorable mountain pass. Uh, Wikipedia would actually have an asterisk next to it because there's, you know, you always keep arguing about that. Uh, and I wrote to other folks saying, you know, I'm doing this, are you interested? The whole idea was as a business model, we needed 25 people because it was not viable otherwise. <clears throat> uh, in two months, I only had four people. I emailed them back saying, guys, it's not happening because it'll turn out to be very expensive. And one of them wrote back saying, this needs to happen. You know, we just need to do this, even if it means just you and me. And so finally, I had four people. One f uh, came out of the run because she had an... Uh, she had an injury or something, and the, we had only three runners, 17 volunteers, and again, you know, going back to the same story that they are younger people and you know, whatever else, uh, they want to be part of this. So I said, I'm not doing this for business, and they volunteered to help me and paid for the cost to make this run happen, 17 folks, and for three runners. And uh, we did this. Now, just to compare where we stand compared to the world's highest m marathon, so that's the world's highest marathon, that's the high, the toughest altitude race in the world, it's a 100 mile a lead well, and that's where we are, okay? So I don't want to go about saying it's the world's highest and all that, I mean, highest can always get higher, I mean, someone could run up to Mount Everest tomorrow, maybe to Moon. Uh, the point is it's high enough for us, and that's why the name high. <clears throat> These are the guys, I mean, very local chaps who put it together, it's not, none of them are super fit people or any of that, just very passionate about the whole cause. Uh, so yeah, we made it happen, we went up to Kardungla, uh, the run finished there. Now the point here is, it's not impossible. I mean, this guy turned the, you know, the whole truck around. So yes, we can do it. Uh, it's only about a small little earth. Uh, again, where I take it from here is, what is the learning point or how, where do I fit in here is, I want to actually take it to people, uh, make this run like a, it deserves to be something like a Tour de France. So if someone actually doesn't follow cycling at all, they would know Tour de France because they follow a little bit sport. Now, this run deserves that, that kind of attention and things like that. Now, if with that, you know, we can get the school kids involved, if we can get the college guys involved because they are tomorrow's decision makers, it's not going to be us. Uh, we keep talking about grandchildren and children. We need to put the onus on them as well. We need to say, hey, here it is. Be a part of it. Uh, see what it is. 
Now, there's a lot of information I completely appreciate. I mean, on a smoking packet, it says, you know, smoking kills. Uh, it makes you important, things like that. No one is getting stopped by doing that. I'm a sports medicine doctor. I'm a musculoskeletal medicine doctor. I mean, I talk about back pain and things like that. If you tell people to not use the computers because they'll have back pain, they don't care. You know, prevention doesn't work. Uh, so if you can put in something which is a little jazzy, a little bit more, you know, hey, dude, this is really cool. I mean, that's the language they use, so why not? Uh, so get them involved into that. Get the corporates involved in things. Uh, so that's the whole plan with that. Again, it's not only about this run. It's about building up to various sporting events where people can connect, and there's a link directly with climate change. Ten days after we did this run, there was lay floods. And again, the way it was covered by India, media, or Delhi, or wherever, it was like as if the, Delhi, uh, the lay floods happened in like five seconds. The lay floods, the previous one was in 2007, completely ignored. The one before that was in 2004. While we were doing, the, doing this run, the temperatures in Himalayas at 13,000 feet had touched 40, 40 degrees Celsius. Now, that's too high. That's 10 degrees higher than last year's maximum. And uh, the temperature variation from 40 degrees, within six hours, we went to minus six. So, you know, it's, things melt. It's snow at the top. They melt, and, you know, rather than you know, the road being for running or, you know, for the cars, actually, uh, it becomes like a river then. Uh, so it was happening right in front of us. It wasn't like... Um, you know, someone had to tell me about 20 years ago where the glacier was and all that. We saw it happening in front of us because for acclimatization, we were at that place 10 days before, uh, where, you know, very comfortable temperatures then. And the whole point is too many butts around. I think we really need to get to, you know, uh, do something about it. Uh, this is a little bit of a doctor talking uh, when, and a sports medicine guy. We say genetics, hey, my dad's like this, my mom's like this, so, you know, blame them. I don't think so. Um, Environment, I'm not the guy. You, you chaps know far better than, than me, so I won't complain or say anything about that. Okay, lifestyle changes. I think that's where I really come in. I mean, talking to them about, at a personal level, at a micro level, how can things be done, uh, you know, move around and doing things like that. So uh, that's where it's important. Yeah, this is done, done. All right, mentioned about Tour de France. The whole idea is, you know, if it means wearing that yellow fluorescent T-shirt and making them go about it, so be it. And... Uh, the last one most important slide for me was the, reading this one there. Failing is not a crime, but lack of effort is. So I'm not sure if, you know, these conferences will lead to something, but if you don't even put, make an effort for it, it's pretty useless then. Uh, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Rajat. Well, I think, Rajat, just hopefully that this is, you know, not going to waste your time coming all the way to Hong Kong, but you would have met uh, Robert Swan, and I think the two of you have something in common. And you never know, maybe we're going to be sending Hong Kong people up on the high run with you uh, at some stage. And as you say, it is a very cool thing to do. Um, and it can be done. It can be done not just by elite runners, but also uh, ordinary, right? Ordinary people, which is what makes it so cool. Now, and this is just to tell you how cool Rajat himself is. Um, before you came to Hong Kong, you were Googling to find out something about Hong Kong. And then we got this email from him saying, oh, I just um, found out that there's going to be a green half marathon in Hong Kong on Sunday. He says, can you sign me up? They need $200. Can you pay that for me first? I'll pay you back later. So um, good luck to you. I'm going to see if I can take you out there uh, early in the morning. The race will be over by 10 a.m. He's got to start at 7.30. So um, good luck to you. Um, I'd like next go to uh, two people who are very special, uh, who are doing something quite different from the sports people, uh, but they have an interesting idea. And I think it's an interesting idea that perhaps um, we can give them a sense of whether we think it's going to work in, in your countries and in Hong Kong or not. But let me introduce them first. We have Mr. Takeo Sugi, who's the Deputy Director at the Environment and Economy Division. Environmental Policy Bureau of the Ministry of Environment in Japan. And we have Nobuhito Hanada, who's Senior Vice President of Business Development at JCB in Japan. The reason I wanted to um, have Mr. Sugi come to Hong Kong is I was curious to know about some of Japan's great ideas. And I talked to him about a, um, a supply side idea, uh, which is very successful, and it's being 
It's being copied around the world, and it's called the Top Runner Scheme. I just wondered whether any of, do any of you know about the Top Runner Scheme? Show of hands. Okay, a few people. So let me just summarize. Um, Japan makes a lot of um, vehicles and electrical products. What they try to do is to raise the, um, the standard, the performing standards of these uh, various products as, soon, as quickly as possible. So when they set a, a new uh, performance uh, regulations, they'll look at what is the product that has the highest performance, and then they'll set the standard there. So this has worked very well in the past uh, 10 or 15 years to push the uh, product standards of uh, quite a wide variety of uh, products from Japan. The other thing that they're doing is they're also giving subsidy away to consumers to buy some of these better products. Now, the problem with subsidy, as you all know, is it can only work for a relatively short time because it's rather expensive. So my question to um, Mr. Sugi was, are there any good examples from Japan where you are now focusing on working on changing consumer behavior? And I think he came up with a good idea, and he's brought Mr. Hanada to talk to us about it as well. But Mr. Sugi, first. Thank you, Christine. Uh, as Christine mentioned, a uh, top runner scheme is some kind of the supply side uh, changing behavior. But uh, recently, we co uh, consider the supply only the supply side change is difficult to reduce the carbon emissions, uh, mainly from the home, uh, home area and uh, office or anything else. So we consider the uh, change it to some kind of a policy to change the consumer behavior. First, as, you, as Chris mentioned, we introduced a subsidy for uh, home appliances. That's great, uh, that uh, result in great success because recently uh, the selling home appliances in Japan, almost nine, more than 19% is the, some kind of top, top runner ranked one. And uh, there are no uh, uh, energy waste home appliances. But that such kind of a system is very uh, introduced very uh, great financial burden. Uh, in this case, uh, we uh, ex uh, government expenditure of the this project is about uh, six uh, six billion dollars U.S. dollars. That's huge, and it is not continuous one. So we ne now examined to uh, cooperate with uh, some kind of the private business sector and without using tax expenditure, but uh, using the private company's voluntary uh, expenditure. That is a uh, point system. Uh, the point system called the action point. Echo action point is the point system that is into, uh, introduced uh, with the tax with JCB, Mr. Hanada. And, uh, in this case, uh, people, if people do something eco-friendly action, for example, uh, buy eco-friendly product is one example. Another example is uh, using, uh, denying the seat changes or the some kind of amenity changes if you stay hotel two more days or three more days. And uh, that system, in this case, if people do such, such kind of eco-friendly eco action, they get 50 points or 100 points, that is equal to uh, 5 Hong Kong dollars or 10 Hong Kong dollars, and they uh, saved it, and they can change some kind of eco-friendly products. Uh, so such kind of a system is, uh, main point is not the government uh, expenditure, but the government only support and only promote and gave, gave ideas, and then successful point is some kind of the voluntary action for private company. So how to work, how to good work with it is a uh, very good point. So I, re, I will change the turn to Mr. Hanada and explain some kind of the action for the equation point. 